We're here with Valérie Urban. It's wonderful to have you face to face. I grabbed you just before you left. <laughs> You're the ex CEO of Euroclear, and today you have another role. Maybe start with an introduction. What do you do nowadays? Yeah. So I was to, I used to be the CEO of Euroclear Bank. Now I'm I am at the level of the group, and I'm the chief business officer of the Euroclear Group, meaning that I'm responsible for all the revenues of the different entities of the group. Wonderful. You talked so eloquently just now. You mentioned why this event, the International Risk Congress, is so wonderful to host at Euroclear. And you gave us three reasons. Tell us. So basically, there are three reasons you need for me to be there. First of all, as a financial market infrastructure, this is very much, the, the clients are very much asking us to be extremely attentive to reduce the risks of the market. And therefore, you know, ourselves applying strictly the regulation is something that is expected from us, but they are also expecting us to help them comply themselves with the regulation and their regulatory obligations. So, I mean, everything related to combating, you know, financial risk um, crime is extremely important for us because, again, this is what our, the market, the clients are expecting. Unfortunately, with the current circumstances that we are seeing with the Russian and, uh, invasion to Ukraine, I mean, we are faced with all the sanctions. And there, I mean, we are really playing an important role because we are navi navigating throughout the different regimes of, of sanctions, the UK, the US, the European, the counter sanctions of the Russia. Of Russia, and clearly our clients are re ex really expecting us to help them understand how these different regimes work together and what is the impact on their assets. We have developed this expertise over time, and therefore any help that you are providing is extremely appreciated by clients. So, already, I mean, in, as in my new role, you know, talking to clients, helping clients is definitely something which is important for me. The second reason is also I've been the Euroclear Bank uh, CEO, where I have set up with the compliance team all the financial crime unit. We have spent quite some years in making sure that we are completely complying with all of the regulations, you know, IML, sanctions, uh, and so forth. And and I'm very proud to see what we have done over the, these years. And therefore, you know, also with this um, interest, with passion about this type of uh, uh, of actions, I mean, th th that was a second reason for me to, to be there this afternoon. On, in this uh, context, I'm very proud to see how the first line has really understood what the second line was asking um, in order to comply with regulations. And we have really spent a lot of time creating awareness, sensitivity to all the um, compliance topics to ensure that, um, again, the right controls would be, would be embedded in the day-to-day. -day. But also, we also created, you know, sufficiently uh, sufficient awareness and empowerment at the level of the first line for them to continue to use their judgment, their common sense, and highlight or, or you know, um, um, realize when something was potentially wrong, you know, yeah. because we feel that applying mechanically regulation is not good enough. We mm -hmm. also need to have the um, our own uh, people using their judgment and their common sense. Lastly, I am also responsible for ESG within the group, and I feel that um, everything we are doing on the financial crime unit is really contributing to the ESG agenda. Since 2008, the financial markets are a lot less attractive to the new generation because it is associated with fraud, with market abuse, with all the wrong practices, which is wrong. And I do feel that we have an obligation to have financial markets which are clean, which are healthy, to really play the role in the society society and to re-attract this new generation. So again, I believe that financial crime unit um, work is extremely important to uh, make our financial markets more attractive and, and more useful to the society. Mm. In fact, recently we heard that tax fraud if there was less tax fraud, then also hunger ch with children, you know, ch child hunger would be solved. It's that crazy. Uh, you mentioned some wonderful points. I want to zoom in on you being a very knowledgeable and strong and professional and representative woman in the field. You talk about the first and second line. Are there enough women in this domain? <laughs> well, we can always do better. 
But it's improving. I mean, especially on the uh, on the financial market infrastructure, you do f- find a, no- a number of women at senior position. But uh, as I said, we can do better. So we need to continue because indeed, I think it's important that we continue to, to look at it in a holistic way, in the way we are uh, managing uh, finance. And uh, I would agree with you that uh, looking at the impact on the and individual is so important. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you mentioned that you're also in touch with different universities to attract talent, future talents, which yeah. would also mean, you know, more women. Uh, what do you focus on? How do you attract this talent? I think it's by, uh, again, explaining how um, w- the contribution financial markets do to society mm-hmm. and, and really explaining that, you know, there are plenty of bad stories, but there are so many good stories and and why, you know, the, 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 the banks and the, the, the banking sector and the financial sector is indeed contributing to the well-being of a society. Is that why you chose this domain yourself as well or was... I don't know, you know, when you are 20, 22, 23, <laughs> I'm not sure that you're always conscious of all these things. So I think I think it, I, I, w- I should remain modest, and I'm not so sure that that's why <laughs> I chose it. But uh, but indeed, I, I mean, I spend quite some time also addressing to young uh, women, you know, to to make sure that they also consider the financial market as a sector for them, because there is also this feeling that this is uh, hard, you know, m- co- uh, content, and it is not for women, which is absolutely not uh, not true. So I mean. Yes, um, I, I continue my my crusade, you know, to have uh, younger people, but also a lot more young women joining us for yes. sure. Yes, not for women would be ridiculous, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, something else? Any future, near future plans for Euroclear? Things you are with your team focusing on? Of course, I mean, and I've seen that you, the, the, the workshop initially was about that. We, conti- we are looking at digitalization. And, you know, I mean, uh, the financial markets are really at a, at a, at a cross, cross point, I would say, at a cross point. And, and yes, we are looking at how we can continue to, um, to, 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 to be relevant to the market while adopting the new technology, while adopting, you know, more digitalization, moving probably from more process-driven services towards data-enabled services. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of things, uh, very passionate things uh, are happening in the market Mm -hmm. and we need to grab them. But at the same time, remain realistic about the the pace of um, adoption that the market has. You know, I mean, we cannot just... uh, from one day to the other, uh, completely change the way we're processing. We need to, I mean, to, to bring with us the, all our clients while, you know, uh, being while in, the, in the world. And therefore, we need also to respect the pace of evolution of our own clients, but bringing them towards more and more this digital world. That's mm. for sure. Mm. So data-driven innovation, which is basically everywhere, doesn't really matter what business we're talking about. Um, but anything in terms of, you know, the mindset. So mm-hmm. we heard, for example, somebody explaining the world of crypto, you know, digital assets versus the traditional bank world. Anything you could, you heard or, you know, you could think of that might help for the next steps? I, I, frankly, f- when you talk about mindset, for me, you know, we, we have issued uh, not so long ago, I think a very good code of conduct. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's extremely important because that's how you deliver your services, you know. And again, come back, coming back on what I said about ESG and about the need to show that how uh, powerful, but at the same time, how uh, correct is the financial market is important. So making sure that you are, you know, uh, uh, I would say um, defining properly the framework and what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, you know, how you want to do it also, including also people, you know, I'm a lot into diversity, but when we talk about diversity, we talk about inclusion yes. and also yes. including, I mean, the people who maybe have less access to the financial markets by education, b- by whatever, you know, it's extremely important we cannot let the people away you know Mm -hmm. Uh, so I feel that the how is important and so um, yeah the the, the code of conduct that we have uh, established uh, which is applicable to all our employees extremely important to ensure that we are offering a service which is the right thing the right and done in the right way for the company and for the society Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So last, we we're talking about uh, financial inclusion. How are you working on that on a global scale? Yeah, we, we do a lot actually. And but, uh, you know, we never have um, uh, retail clients uh, as yeah. such in Euroclear. Yeah, we are only working through through banks, yeah. but but the, the 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 ecosystem that we have developed, you know, whereby we are really putting together the issuers and the investors, as as demonstrated over time that we are we are giving you know access to financing for a number of markets, uh, to international financing, which at the end is decreasing the cost of the debt for those markets, and by doing so is again I mean um, you know contributing to the to the improvement of the well being of 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 the society of the country. So we do believe that, you know, as a financial market infrastructure, we are really there to to improve, you know, how financial institutions are indeed servicing their, their own uh, economies. So, yes, we, we are very proud of uh, saying that uh, even if it is indirect, still we have an impact on uh, on some markets or some uh, on some um, sectors. Mm -hmm. That's a bit the same thing that we want to apply on ESG. We want also to increase the scale of the sustainable financial markets by ensuring again that we give access to um, issuers or to you know companies who are looking for funding to go through the transition to a greener economy. We want to make sure that we are there to support there to reduce the barriers of entry for them in order to get the right financing to do the right uh, investment. So mm. again, I mean, a lot of things for the future to, to continue to work on. Wonderful. So wonderful to talk to you as well. And I think you are definitely a role model for <laughs> all those uh, women out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't like to be a role model. I'm just doing what I can, the best way I can. <laughs> Which is exactly why you are a true role model. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>